Hey, welcome back to the channel of Survivors. Tonight we have a really special show. We're going to be talking about the attempted kidnapping of the Michigan governor, Gretchen Whitmer, and a few other topics. Uh, we're going to be, it's going to be a really good show. I want to talk about it real quick. John made me the Whiskey Ricky. He did a little show on it, and it's the, called the Whiskey Ricky. And I got to tell you, this thing is kick-ass. Holy cow, this is my second one. It is really good. Good job, Thank man. You. That is a good whiskey. And it's the black cherry whiskey that makes it, I think. It really is good. Yeah. Let's get going here. We're going to talk about our beer moment. All right. Today's Go ahead. Today's beer moment is brought to you by Kenny's Grocery at 1792 and French Avenue in Orange City. And we're going to be trying Park Hopper. Park Hopper, a golden pilsner made by Ivanhoe Park Brewing Company. I'm going to give this a 9. It is freaking excellent. Oh, this is very good. Yeah. What's your rating? Um, I'm going to give it a 9.2. Absolutely. Camille, you missed out, dude. Camille couldn't be here tonight. He's off on vacation with his family. Awesome. I'm glad he's out having a good time. But he missed the night where we've got one of the best beers we've had on the show. This stuff is amazing. It's really good. I'd like to thank our other sponsors, and that is Tom Clem and Kristen Clem of Clem Exit Realty. And they do a great job, and we really appreciate your sponsorship. Um, and our other sponsor is CNR Constructors. <coughs> they are a general contractor here in the state of Florida, and they do an absolutely awesome job. John, they just finished a bunch of work for they you. They at my house today. They built me steps for my pool. They closed in my carport. They built a whole garage for him out of a carport, garage door, everything included. Turned out fantastic. All right. So, John, let's go ahead and start talking about our show, buddy. What you got? Okay. Um... There's a trial going on right now in Michigan um, involving Brandon Caserta, Barry Croft, Adam Dean Fox, and Daniel Harris. Um, they're charged with the attempted kidnapping and various other, the attempted kidnapping of Michigan Governor Kristen Whitmer, I'm sorry, Gretchen Whitmer, <laughs> and, and several other crimes. Um, and one of the reasons I want to talk about this case today was... They're going to use the defense of entrapment. Um, now, some of the things that go along with this case, um, there are two other defendants who actually already pled out, Ty Garbin and K Caleb Franks. They've already pled guilty, and they have now turned state's witnesses. Um, kind of the background on this show is in the summer of 2020, Croft and several other people met in Dublin, Ohio, to discuss creating a society that followed the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. People often think that the Bill of Rights is one thing and the Constitution is a different thing. The Bill of Rights is part of the Constitution. Yes, it is. Um, and they could uh, be self-sufficient. And these discussions went everything from peaceful protesting and peaceful activism, things that you could do, all the way to violent actions, including attempts of overthrowing the government and things like that. Um, now, you got to keep in mind, in the summer of 2020, that's when COVID restrictions were pretty much at their height. Maximum. Yep. And, you know, you got to remember, Gretchen Whitmer, as the governor of Michigan, she had some of the strongest restrictions in her state. She did. You, could, you couldn't even go out on a boat. Yeah. Yet, yeah. her husband was caught trying to go out on a boat. You weren't allowed to leave the state, yet she traveled to Florida. But wait, does that surprise you? Wait a minute. A politician making a rule and then breaking the rule? Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, so people all over the country and, heck, all over the world at this point are getting totally frustrated. I'm not defending what these guys did, so please, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, but you got to remember the mindset at that time. I mean... Yeah. To this day, Canada is finally starting to open up a little bit after the uh, the truckers' rally that they right, had there. Right, right. 
Um, so anyway. Hey, you know what the good thing about that period of time is? July of 2020? You and I have just retired, baby. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so they were at this meeting of several people from several states. Um, present there was an FBI confidential informant who recorded the meeting. Okay, so that led to other follow-up investigations, but also what happens is the... Based on that information, the FBI informant indicate you know told the FBI that you know they, you know that they believe that there might be crimes being planned and things like that. So then, the FBI then tried to infiltrate other organizations that were there that were present, um, and there were two main other CIs, but they've only been identified as Dan and Steve so far. The FBI says as a result of their infiltration of these groups and things like that, um, they have hundreds of hours of audio recordings, um, secret, um, well, encrypted text messages and things like that, incriminating these people, indicating that... Yeah, all kinds were, of stuff from the computers, I think right, it was, too, right. I read, and yeah. Um, um, but the these four defendants plan on using the defense of... Entrapment. What is and, entrapment, John? Well, that's what I want to kind of talk about. Um, can I can I give my little reason um, or my little definition that I was told when I was in the drug unit? It's it, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, because it, sure. it kind of puts it in a little bit of lay's ter layman's terms. But when we would go out and we would do drug buys, the um, the bosses used to tell us, "Look, when you're going out, you know, when you're gonna." go up to back back then it was you know crack was the big thing and and they said when you're going to go up to one of these crack dealers you can't go up there and say oh man please sell to me i need it i need it i need that crack so bad i'm gonna die man i gotta have that crack because that was considered entrapment because you're enticing someone to do something that they may not normally do under a different circumstance so me begging for it and say I'm gonna die if I don't get it. You know I'm hurting. I'm really hurting bad. That the the courts had looked at that back then. It looked at that and said, "Hey, eh, you're enticing them to sell to you when they probably wouldn't have sold to you." So we just had to go up and say, "Hey, man, I want a twenty piece," and give them a twenty dollar bill and take off. Right. But anyway, that was our definition in the drug unit. That well, was and I remember in the academy, you know, the the legal instructor. Um, all he said was, well, not all he said, but the basic definition was to instill the desire to commit the crime. Right. Right. Okay. But and the, basically, me begging would, right. you know, they they could get away with that. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So now I got I got this from the Department of Justice website, um, where it says a definition of what entrapment is. When government agents, well, government agents may not originate a criminal design, implant an innocent person. Implant in an innocent person's mind the disposition to commit a criminal act and then induce commission of the crime so that the government can prosecute. And then there are two related elements to that, government inducement of the crime and the defendant's lack of pre, pre, predisposition to engage in criminal, act, criminal right. conduct. So, and like you were talking about, some of the ways to induce criminal acts is overbearing conduct such as begging them or... You know, or you put a gun to their head and oh, say, yeah, go yeah, that sword yeah, on you the your hands out. Um, you know, I mean, badgering, coercing, right. uh, making offers. You know, hey, if you do this, I'll reduce these charges, things like that. Right. Um, but wait, is me sitting down the street with a radar gun and waiting for someone to come at me? Is that is that entrapment? No. Oh, well, but they say it all the time on all these blogs and I all know, these things. I know, it's entrapment. That, uh, there's no, it was a speed trap and it's entrapment. There's no way th that I would have sped it, you know. Yeah, see see how silly that sounds? Well, read some of the blogs and some of the comments on some of these police blogs, and it's always entrapment. They, I, they, the cops entrap me. It's ridiculous, but anyway. You know, but, but I wanted to kind of talk about entrapment because you're going to hear this on, on the news a lot. You are. And it, it's becoming a bigger problem nowadays because the government is be, 
is trying to, and, and, and there's a reason for it. I'm not, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be trying to infiltrate groups that they suspect suspect of being involved in criminal right. activity. Um, and, and one of the big things is anything known as a militia. Okay, well, a, a militia is actually a group of people who decide to do drills, usually using guns. Um, it's a private army. Right. Basically. But but there's nothing illegal about being no, a private army. not at army. all. Not at all. It's not illegal to have views contrary to the government. Um, or, Half of the soldiers in the Civil War belonged to militias. Right. You know, well, I mean, I the mean, Second <laughs> Amendment specifically says a well-regulated militia. Absolutely. Um, and, and one of the problems we have nowadays is they want to attach criminal activity to almost everything. Yeah. You know, it's, oh my gosh, it's a white ring, right wing militia group. Um, you know. Well, yeah, no, you're right. You know, but. And it's always, oh, it's some damn rednecks. Like everybody thinks the only people in the militia are rednecks. That's not true. So, but but that's not the only thing that they're they're infiltrating. They're, they're trying to get into, um, you know, the government. Not get into, but they're trying to put informants right. into Organizations like motorcycle clubs, um, organized crime, you know, I'll, I'll say the word mafia, um, but I mean, there's Russian organized crime, Irish organized oh, crime, God, and Asian. Patrick, yeah, yeah, Asian. Yeah, yeah. Asian. Um, so, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Hey, cheers. St. Patty's Day, St. Patrick's my, my Day. little Irishman. There you there go. There you go, buddy. Um, St. Patty's Day, guys. And if you didn't see it, we also, uh, I did another. Uh, I meant to say bar moment, but I said beer moment. I made another little short, and I made an Irish stinger. It's really good. Yeah, check that it. out, guys, because it's only a, a minute and, like, 20 seconds long, and I tried the drink that he's talking about. Man, it is freaking good. So, so anyway, I, I wanted to talk about what it is that these confidential informants, and a confidential informant is not an actual officer of the law or an agent of the law. Correct. Confidential informant is someone who, for whatever reason, is willing to work with the government agency. So it may be someone who um, is uh, working off a, a prison sentence. You know, they got a reduced sentence, but because they were able to, um, because they had that criminal behavior, criminal act in the past, they were able to get into these clubs or organizations and things like that. Sammy the Bull of Gravano. Right. Was basically a unwitting, but he was a he was a CI there towards the end against John Gotti. And he did it to reduce his sentence because he was the killer in the mob and he would have went to the chair or whatever they had up there and he would have death sentence for sure. Right. And now he he, he was live. I just right. saw a show with him the other day. So but, but you like, know, that's what he was. You mentioned that you were in the drug unit, um, but that was just a, a countywide drug unit. You weren't doing deep undercover work or anything like that. Now, it, no, we didn't have anybody like in place in a biker gang or anything right. like that where they were actually living as a biker or a gangster. No, we didn't have anything like that. But what happens is when you're doing this work, you know, you usually have what's called a handler that yeah. says, hey, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. There are certain laws that you might be allowed to break. It's not that you're allowed to break them and, you know, oh, you don't get in trouble or anything like that. But it's arranged with, like, the prosecutor's office. Right. Hey, we know this is going to happen. You know, obviously, you know. Nothing... Smoke a joint. Right. You know, something like that. Right. You, you, you can get away with that. If not, if you say, oh, no, I can't smoke a joint. Right. They'll be like, get the fuck out of here. You're a cop. Right. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, I mean, and a lot of these role. organizations try to. Do things that they don't think cops can do. Absolutely. So that if it is a police officer or an agent for the government, you know, they're going to be found out because, oh, no cop is going to. Uh, hey, here's another question. And this one always comes up and it cracks me up. And, and, and you see it in some of the TV shows. Not a lot anymore, but used to. And then, but you see, whoa, we're getting some thunder. Wow, yeah. that's a big one. Um, big one. When they say... Um, are you a cop? I know you. I know you can't lie. I know you got to tell me if you're a cop, guys. There is nothing in the law that says 
that a cop cannot lie at all. There's nothing in the law that says they cannot lie. What they can't do is they can't hand you a piece of paper and say, I have your fingerprints and here they are right here and tell you those are your fingerprints. When and they're not. Sh and, and they're not. They, they can't, can't manufacture evidence. Correct. They can't do that. But they can lie their asses off all day long and tell you that they're not a cop and whatever else. Okay, go ahead. No, Sorry. Right, I'm well, just trying to educate them a little bit. Well, and the problem is the handler tells them, you know, hey, if this happens, do this. Mm -hmm. But these CIs are part of the group. Yes. And it's hard when you're part of a group. You know, to not be an active participant in it right? without being found out. Famous one was the guy that was in the biker gang, the Hells Angels. Mm -hmm. For years and years and years and years, he was in the biker gang. And, I mean, he was brought in almost, he worked his way right up the ladder as one of the officers in the biker gang. He was a cop. The whole right. entire time, he was a cop. You know, you got to live the life. you got to do the crimes. You know, you can't kill nobody or anything like that. But, you know, if it's, it's you're going to go take, you know, whatever it is, you know, 50 bucks from somebody or something like that and threaten them, you know, as long as you don't hurt them physically, like like shoot them or something like that. There's certain things that you can do and to hold your role as a CI. But, yeah, that guy and, with the biker gang, man, he was in there for a long time. But normally what they do is you have a handler who's working with the prosecutor who's handling the case right. and all that stuff, and you know your parameters. Yeah, they draw the boundaries. Right, yeah, like, no, you can't do this. Right. And, and if you know that, you know, hey, I'm going to have to go Whack kidnap somebody. someone. Or, or kidnap, you know, yeah. I'm going to have to go kidnap someone. Okay. <clears throat> well, okay. yeah, but what they're going to do is say, okay, you give us all the information, and then we will put an end to it. You know. Right. But or what, we're going to act like you were kidnapped right. and take you out of the scene you know, for however long it is until that job or whatever it is is done. And they do have a duty. If they know that there has been a contract, a murder mm -hmm. contract on an individual, and they are aware of that, they do have a duty to notify that victim or that potential victim that there has been a hit put out on them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes that kind of uncovers their hand a little bit, but they do it in the subversive ways, you know, right. however they do it, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it, it's it's but, touchy, man. It's but touchy. what they're trying to do now, or not trying to do now, I'm, I'm just saying it's very difficult to be involved in these organizations and as a um, confidential informant um, and not be a participant to an extent. And what are you... What are you contributing to it? Are you saying, "Hey, let's let's go train in the woods"? On, you know, right. you know, or you know, they said, you know, now it was a or it was stated that um, I think it was Dan Croft, um, you know, Barry Croft. Um, he wanted everyone to chip in four thousand dollars to pay for explosives so they could blow up a bridge for their right. getaway. And, right. um, now, if he was doing that, that's his problem and he did that wrong but if one of the CIs was saying you know hey guys maybe we can kidnap the governor maybe that's an idea and they kind of run with it you know the problem is you know that guy's got to kind of stop it like, no we can't do that because part of the problem was some of the stuff some of the recordings and things like that that they have are obviously you know drunken comments and you know and you can see, you know, in, in the um, videos and stuff like that, from what I heard, I haven't seen the actual evidence, um, you know, there were drunken statements. And we've all made statements that we didn't mean or didn't think we were ever going to do. Like, you know, I'm late on my mortgage this month. I should just go rob a bank. Right. You know, right. so if he's a cop and I say, I should just go rob a bank, he says, well, here, let me show you how to do it. And then you go and, then, and you know, commit an overt act, which is right. what? Um, one act to complete the crime. Go buy a gun. Right. Or whatever to, yes, to, to forward that act, yes. But if you tell me, you know, hey, you know, First National Bank, you know, they, this is how they open their bank. Right. 
Okay, so you may be able to do this. Okay, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, I really need to rob a bank. I need the money. I'll do it. Well, you just, I wasn't necessarily predisposed to that crime, but you kind of instilled the desire that, you know, hey, I can do this. Right, right. You know, so, so that's where we get back to with some of the instilled a desire um, and a predisposition for the crime. Now, it, it says predisposition towards criminal activity. It doesn't necessarily mean that particular crime. Any criminal activity. Right. Right. But, you know, if you have a drug user. Right. Okay. So you, you were talking about drugs earlier with your, you know, and hey, so I, I need it. I need it. I need it. One, one of the examples I, I read before was, um, actually it was a previous, I think it was a case, um, but a um, cop kept going to this one drug user who he knew was on prescribed drugs, dr illegal drug user. Right. But he kept asking, you know, hey, I need some of this for my mother. She's She's really in pain. I need it. I need it. I need it. And he went for like two weeks straight asking her for it. Yeah. You know, and then he said, she's on her deathbed and she just needs to be out of pain. That's, that's tough, man. <clears throat> and then that's finally, this drug user, so this possessor of illegal narcotics, yeah. sold him the drugs. And that was the CI that was asking that many it times? It was an actual cop. Oh, but, that's, yeah, but, but that's, that's entrapment. Yeah, that's entrapment. Because, okay, they that's used all those, you know, Enticing. behaviors, yeah. enticements. Yeah. Okay, yes, this person was predisposed towards some criminal activity, but wasn't predisposed to commit that criminal act. Yeah, no. So she wasn't going to be a drug dealer. That's no good. That's no good. You know, so. So what do you think is going to happen to these guys? Well, I mean, from what you've read and what you've seen, I mean, if they've got that many hours and hours and hours of audio and everything, obviously they've got them talking about this a lot, making plans, everything else. I mean, what do you think? Well, the whole thing is, how did they, you know, how was the seed planted? True, yeah. You know, who, who came up with the actual True. thing? And what did they do to continue it? Right. Yeah. You know, because you can also, if you were like, you know, oh, shit, they're, they're actually running with this thing. Yeah, because if you said, oh, man, I'm so broke, I need to rob a bank. And then two weeks later, you don't say another word about it. And two weeks later, Jimbo says, hey, man, you remember when you said let's rob a bank here? I got four guns. I went and got a ski mask. I went, whoa, 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 whoa. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yes, how, how I think it's going to go. There's some other problems that the, the government okay. has with this. Um one of the lead investigators was subsequent to the the arrest on this case. He was fired for domestic violence. Oh, Jesus. So he can't testify. There are, oh. there are two other lead investigators who are not able to testify um, for other reasons. They didn't really go into exactly why, but I think it's uh, job-related. But not entrapment-related. No, 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 not that I'm aware <laughs> But... The biggest thing is, it's it's where did the plan, where was the seed planted, and right. what did any government agents do to further that plan? If and, anything. If anything. Right. And if they did it, I honestly think that th this may be a valid defense. It, it's a very fine line having confident, confidential informants do things for you. I mean, you work yeah. with CIs. And you're not sitting there with the CI, so you, confidential informant, CI, you can't control what they say. Yeah, you can hear them because they're on a wire and everything else, or it's being taped or whatever. Yeah, how many times did you say, oh, damn, why yeah, did you say exactly. that? Exactly, oh. and that's what I'm saying. So who knows what this guy or gal or whoever the CI was, you know, Dan and Steve, whatever, who knows what they said, and that's all going to come out. So I don't right. know, man. It, it so. could very well be. And then trap case, which, if it is, can you imagine the embarrassment, dude? Not only for the FBI, but this governor who has went through all this thinking people were getting ready to kidnap her and everything else. You know, and, and she's been fearful for her life. I don't like this governor, personally. Mm. I, I think she's a, she's a whack job, but whatever. I You know, just the, the stuff that she's went through thinking that this happened plan was hatched 
And then if it find out, well, no, they only talked about it, and then the seed was all planted by somebody else, man, she's going to be pissed. <laughs> If that's the case, it could not be. Yeah, because I, very I, well not be the case. I, I can you know? promise you that in this era of COVID lockdowns and things mm-hmm. like that, I, I I think it would be a safe bet that at least one million people in America, at some point from March of 2020 right. to this day, have said we need to overthrow the government. I'm not saying we should. I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do. But people are very concerned about their rights. And their rights are being at least limited. Yeah. And and you can't argue that. I mean, you had people who weren't able to go to church. Correct. Okay. You had people who weren't allowed to socialize with their own family. I mean, this is not... America that we came to know and love. Now, there was reasoning behind why they did what they did, but people were going crazy. Yeah. I mean, society was thrown totally up in the air. Well, you talk about people wanting to overthrow the government, and, and, you know, I mean, look at January 6th. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's another example of people fed up with the BS that's going on. So did that conversation start, you know, right after this mess or before this mess or whatever? And then while they were looking in the January 6th thing, they found this mess. I mean, who knows? I mean, and, you know, and I'll tell you, I mean, ironically, I said I, I would safely wager at least one million. OK, since um, March of 2020, when the COVID lockdown started. Right. Well, that mean that's including the Donald Trump presidency. And the Joe Biden presidency. I'm not saying people haven't said it about either or both. Right. Okay, because we're still seeing our rights infringed upon. And where does it end? Um, So anyway, I just wanted to give a little overview of what entrapment is, because I I know you're going to hear about it. um, A seventh booster shot. Oh, there you go. And triple masks. Well, yeah, because they, they just... That'll end it all. You know, well, we just extended the uh, the mask mandate for all transportation, the TSA did, Yeah, for right. another month. Yeah, I okay. think at least a seventh yeah, or because, eighth booster shot. Yeah, well, that ought to cause, do it. Because I'm, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm going to Ireland for my niece's world championships Ooh. in Irish step dancing. So we're going to Ireland, but, you know, I wouldn't have had to wear a mask, but they just... Extended the stupid thing, so... Well, as far as I know, because we're going on a cruise in the summertime... The the cruise is different. That's not even American... No, I know. I'm just saying, as far as I know, they still uh, have relaxed the mask thing. But to fly out to where we're going, we still have to wear it on the plane. Right. And I got to tell you, I am not a mask fan. I'm immunized or vaccinated, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, Because of my age, you know, and and everything. But anyway... Six hundred and seventy-two. I am not looking forward to wearing that damn mask for three or four hours before we have our link. You know, we got to, and they were going to fly straight out. And I'm like, okay, how many hours is that? And they said it's seven hours. And I went, oh, whoa, 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 seven hours on a plane, six foot three, three hundred pounds, and can only get up once in a while and walk. Dude, I would die. I would absolutely die with a bad knee. No way, not happening. I said, let's get a connecting flight. Camille's, Camille's going with us. And I went, and he goes, yes, yes. <laughs> and Camille's only like five, seven or five, whatever. And, he, you know, 200 pounds or whatever. And he's like, yes, yes, connecting flight. So it's going to be tough, man, to wear that mask for the three hours, you know, whatever. But no, not me. We're flying all the way to Ireland. So <sighs> what is that? Like a 12, 13 hour flight? I don't know. I think it's like seven or eight. I, I honestly don't know. Well, just from here to Seattle is seven hours. Yeah, well, we're going. I know you're going the other state. way, but ooh, yeah, man. the U.S. is a fairly big country. Just yeah, so that know. is for sure. We just got to fly over an ocean. That's you know what we didn't do? We didn't do our trivia question. Oh, okay. Well, so hopefully you've watched to this point because and and trivia question. Here we go. Well, and it, it's not necessarily a trivia question. Okay. Here's what we did. Okay. Yes. We have one of these stickers, a classic. Classic Surviving the Badge sticker. Yes. 
we have placed one at Kenny's Grocery. All you need to do, be the first person to comment where that sticker is. Because on your screen now, at the bottom, is our logo now. That is our old logo. So we can't even get these stickers anymore. So they are classics. We're going to hold on to a few of them because, you know, Memorial, yeah. because we can't get them anymore. Um, but yeah, those are classics. And multi gazillionaires. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so Kenny's Grocery, 1792 and French Avenue in Orange City, Florida. 1792 Make it easy to find Avenue. it. If, if you're going to... Blue Springs Park, if you're familiar with the area. So look at the manatees. You know, 1792, right when you make the turn to go towards Blue Springs Park. It's right there. It's right Kenny's there. Grocery, right there. So. And you, you saw the picture earlier, so you can't miss it. All right, so I don't think I have anything else. Please, guys, comment below. And uh, we always answer our comments. Like and subscribe. And uh, if you have questions or comments, you know, about this case, what your thoughts are with entrapment, this and that, Please post them. John, I, and Camille are constantly, I mean, within a day at the very most, usually within an hour or two, we answer the comments. And we're getting a lot of good comments. And we're getting a lot of good comments. Good so, conversations. Actually. And, and yeah, actually, and you know what? It was funny because on, on the show, um, our biggest show, the uh, um, Ethan Crumley? Yes, the Ethan Crumley show, um, I had a family member of Tate Mirror, I pronounced it correctly this time. Family member, correct the pronunciation because we were saying Meyer, and it's not, it's pronounced Mirror, who is the hero football player, the snap. But um, so we're connecting with folks out there. Share us with your friends. If, if you want to see a com, I mean, a comment, a, a topic covered on the show, guys, we pull your comments. And if, if we think it's something that is trending and needs to be covered, We'll cover it on our very next show or the, you know, the, the next yeah, show we after. we no-knock warrants because of that. Absolutely. No-knock warrants came up. We, bam, we covered it the very next week. So we really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very, very much. We're at 340 subscribers. We're trying to get to that magical 1,000 mark so that we can do live videos from our phones and this and that. It's really going to help us out a lot. Plus, it'll start paying us an itty bitty little tiny bit to help us Get better equipment in this and that for the show. We really appreciate it. All right. I have a mixed drink in my Georgia cup. So we're going to do a salute because it's surviving the badge. We still, still got, got your six. six. Absolutely.